basics for the Acer lathe. We have the tool post, the tool post holder. Of course, our cutting tool is in here. This is the lever that releases the tool post holder. So if you move this over, the tool post could come off. Before you put this back in or another one, make sure that all mating surfaces are clean on both sides. You don't want to have any chips in there. That's going to throw your values off from one time to the next. You put the new tool in there, you slide it on the tool post, and you latch the lever down. If you're cutting and you notice that the tip of your tool is below or above the center line of the part, please let one of the staff members know so they can come over and adjust this nut and get everything back in adjustment. The next thing is our compound rest. This, you can, as you move this hand wheel, you can move it in or out. You use that for doing chamfers and such and parts. But you normally want to have these two lines right here, somewhat in line, they don't have to be exact. And then I bring everything to a, in a clockwise direction to a value, normally zero. That way if I accidentally bump this later on, I can return it back to the same location without affecting my digital readout values. So one word of caution, if you're coming in, in a counterclockwise direction, the forces of, while cutting may actually start to move this back. You won't notice it, but all of a sudden you'll see a taper in your part or it's going to measure off. So avoid that. Make sure that you bring it in in the clockwise direction. The same thing goes for the cross slide. So make sure that you're coming in a clockwise direction to the value that you want to cut. Go ahead and cut over and back. If you do it in the counterclockwise direction, you're going to have the same issue with backlash and it's going to wind up possibly being tapered. If for some reason you accidentally go too far, just don't simply back up the knob or the knob to the number on the dial here. Make sure you go completely fast and then go back to it again. That way the backlash is in, in your favor. Now far as the cross slide here, this is our Z-axis. You can use the handle of the knob here on the hand wheel to go quick movements. If you want to feed nice and slow, grab it with both hands and move it like this. This works much better better, you have a lot more control over what you're doing. The same goes for the x-axis here, or the cross slide, is you can move it you know, nice and smoothly this way, and this will be more of a rapid move. To turn the machine on, you have this lever here on the right, it's red. If I move it out and down, it's going to go forward. Going back to center position, it's off, and there's a break at the bottom here, you can step on and stop the spindle right away. If I were to move it out and up, it's going to go in a reverse direction. But normally you don't cut in that direction, but there are cases where you might. The other two knobs that you see here, this one here is for threading, this one is for doing power feeds. If you're doing a longer part than you would do in ME13, please get assistance from a staff member to show you how to set that up. All right, for changing the speeds on the Acer lathe, you're mainly just going to be using these two knobs here and this little chart. Everything you see down here, this is for the direction of feed rate, and these down here are for feed rates. And everything down here you won't be using in the ME13, but if you need further instructions for feed rates, please ask a staff member. To change, say for instance, we want to go to uh, 1400 RPMs. We'd have to make sure that this lever is pointed over there. Sometimes you have to move the spindle around a little bit to make it go in gear. And we have to make sure we're on C, so we move the C. So now it's set at 1400 RPMs. For your um, mandrel in the ME13, you're probably going to be using about 1100 RPMs. So that should be set at B in the middle. And then set to this roll here. So we put it in there, move the spindle again slightly by hand to make sure it goes in. You could test it here with this button, just to make sure it's in gear properly. And this is the emergency stop button. If that's in, you won't be able to start it. You have to make sure you rotate the switch till it pops out, and then it should work. This is for a coolant pump, which we don't currently have uh, installed, so leave it in off position. All right, operations of the tail stock. When this lever is in the downward position, it moves left to right, depending on where you move it. You can lock it into position by pushing down here. This lever here is for moving the quill stop. So when it's down, I can move the quill in and out of it. When I push it down, it locks into position. 
there's a dowel here on the end. This you can set, for instance, you're doing the manual, it has to hold this 28 inches deep. You might come over and you're going to zero this out by holding this handle firm and then you're rotating this neural number knob and then you can rotate this in according to the depth that you need. To take the tail stock out, I'm going to take this chuck, this is the chuck for holding drill bits. You take that out, you bring the quill all the way back until that pops out. Now to put it in, all you have to do is there's a little ting here. You have to find out where that lines up. Lines up right there. Bring the quill out some. Make sure the surface is clean. If it's not, wipe it off with the rag. Make sure it's clean. Make sure there's no debris inside the, the quill itself. And just give this back down and it should hold itself in place. For installing drill bits, this is a center drill. But when I use do my first step there, I just basically put this in the chuck. Bring the chuck down, take the chuck key, put it in here, and tighten it. So that's all there is to it. You take out the drill bit, you just take the chuck key, loosen it, and take the drill bit out. There are cases where you need to support the end of your work because it's a long work. So we're going to use a live center. So after you did a center drill operation, you would then take your chuck key, your chuck out. You would put a live center in. What this is, it has bearings in here with the tip that supports it. So this tip is at an included angle of 60 degrees, so make sure your center drill matches at 60 degrees. We do have a lot of 90 degree center drills in the shop, so make sure you don't use a 90 degree center drill with us. And again, you just slide it into place. And take it out, just back it all the way out until this comes out.